and let yourself sink a little more deeply into this moment, into this very perfect now. No place else to be, nothing to do. Just letting your breath soften, letting your consciousness inhabit your whole being from the top of your head, your crown chakra, all the way down to the soles of your feet, into the beautiful earth, into the grid of Gaia right here underneath us. And there's nowhere else to be but here, is there? In this beautiful, perfect now, opening yourself to receive. Receive the love in the room. Receive the honoring of your humanity and your sacredness. Your sacredness coming in more deeply to what that means and receiving on that level, opening to what the consciousness is. What does your magnificence mean to you? What does it mean to be honored in this way by the divine, by the I am presence, and by the loving presence of Kryon? Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Occasionally, there are channels where their information is secondary. And what is primary? is the message of love. I want to give you some information, but always couched in appropriateness and belief. I'll say it again. This message is real to you. The man in the stool he must step aside to such a degree that a stream of consciousness comes to him using his own intellect, language, body, voice to deliver a message that is not his. The school that is next door teaches this. The key to channeling is letting go. And so this is a message from my partner, letting go, but the message is from me. And the me I speak of is the energy from that which you would call the creative source. Some say it would be angelic information. Dear ones, you can call it what you wish. But the sacredness is a handshake with you. If you feel an affinity to the voice, to me, to the message, it's because we're connected. There are different kinds of connections that we are only just beginning to let you know about. The last time we channeled in another city, we opened a door that we have opened before regarding a subject. And the subject may seem to you a bit too scientific. But dear ones, it isn't about science. We speak of physics. But dear ones, physics is the reality you sit in. It's not the study of physics. It's the reality of the way things work. The creative source, God, the I am, 
is the great physicist. The creative source is that which made the planet the way things work, literally laid the groundwork for all the rules that you would call physics. And we said it the last time and we want to say it again and we'll say it after this. If you, with a high consciousness, decided to build physics, to create a reality, the reality that they would have rules about it and the way things worked. Wouldn't you be tempted to stir a little love in there? <laughs> Dear ones, this is what has happened. Now human beings have free choice. They can ignore all of this and there is no judgment if they do. The door opens when you ask it to, metaphorically, to reveal things to you which will enhance your life. You can go all of your life without seeing the door, and we've told you this. Without opening, we've told you this. Without even being aware there is one. And you can come through an entire lifetime and come back and we get the same party as the healer, as the channeler. It's about the expression of life on the planet. It's not what you do. This is outside of what you've been told and what you've been taught for you are action driven. Humanity judges you by who you are and what you've done and God judges you not at all. You are a piece of the creative source. You are family. And you are here doing a job. And the job is this. Can you live on this planet, be exposed to the things you are with free choice and realize that God is inside? And if you can, can you then go to the next step, which is to surrender to that energy to the extent where you say, I want to take your hand. I want to see what I'm missing. And what I've told you before, dear ones, is that when you do this, you're only going to get benevolent results. There's no fire walk for you. There's no suffering for you. There's nothing supposedly that you then must do. The things that spirit will give you will be in the way of you then desiring to do them. In fact, you may even think it's your own intuition. It'll be your higher self. And you start to see yourself change. And you realize that nobody has pushed you there. That you have had the intuition that'll take you where you need to go. There is a system of love in physics is hiding. Now a review of the last channel from the last city. I gave it a name. The field. And we told you that this is physics with an attitude. Only the attitude is benevolence. Could it be that there is a reality that is benevolent to everything that touches it? Could it be that there is a reality which we call the field that tries to unite and synchronize everything that it comes in contact with? And the answer is, oh yes. Science has actually seen this and given it a name which is incorrect which is called entrainment. We speak of the field in a grander way. It really is entanglement with benevolence and the creative source. And it's responsible for a lot. If you use your logic in everyday life, 
sometimes you have to stop and say, why do the things happen the way they do? When you talk about the love of God, the benevolence of God, you might say, that's beautiful, but what is it really? What's the essence of what pushes me or you, my partner, to benevolent outcomes? Cryon is here with my partner because he asked for it. Dear ones, all he had to do was open the door and say yes. He didn't have to drag me into his life. Because there's something called the field. I want you to think of the field as something that's always around you all the time. It winks at you and smiles at you because it's benevolent and wishes to push or pull you when you say yes. If I told you there was a train that you could get on, and that that train would take you someplace. The first question you would ask is, how do I get on it? The next question, as you sat there on it, you might say, and when will it take me there? And what do I have to do to start the engine of the train? And then the train moves by itself. And then you have to ask, what is it that causes the train to move? Now, this is a metaphor, but dear ones, it's everywhere. I'm going to give you answers to questions you never asked. I would like to expose something you've never even thought of. Why does Mother Nature work? Mother Nature has been explained and defined as a finite system like a beautiful clockwork of life and Gaia of energy of light and dark of all the elements that come together perfectly an untouched environment will be balanced and that balance you can see with the plants and the animals, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, the waters, the circle and cycle of life, the insects. And you have to stand back. And the comment that you would make is, isn't Mother Nature wonderful? And then you walk away. How can you do that without asking, what is it? <laughs> Do you just assume that balance happens normally, by itself, without any kind of system? Do you think that balance is random? And this planet just happened to fall into a sweet spot of randomness and be perfect. <laughs> Some way, somewhere, somehow, Someone is going to ask, where does the balancing property come from? Who balances it? It's too perfect. Humanity begins to understand the reality of this balance. Did you know even that the oceans of this planet have the ability to clean themselves up from oil spills? Were you not aware that before humans ever got here, there were oil spills? Immense oil spills. Oil bubbles up from the bottom of the sea. That's where they find it today. <laughs> and all by itself, millions of gallons bubble up, cover the ocean, and go away. Bioremediation. Did you know that that was balanced as well? Humans probably haven't even thought of that. Because when you have an oil spill, it's a catastrophe. You give almost no credibility whatsoever for natural remediation or even the existence of it. It's almost like you invented oil. 
Dear ones, there's many of these kinds of things. What happens when an environmentalist decides to change the balance of an area for economic reasons? First, an environmentalist probably wouldn't do that, unless, of course, they worked for the government. <laughs> if you change one thing, it throws everything else out of balance, and you see it immediately. You see the one thing reacting to this, and therefore it affects something else, and that perfect balance goes away. And then the human will realize the mistake and try to correct it by rebalancing it, and it never works. You have to ask the question, what is it? What is it that makes a perfect balance? And now I will tell you, Mother Nature is not random. Mother Nature is the name for the field. The field, again, is a physics that wants and demands synchronous action of harmony and balance. And things that are left alone are not random, dear ones. They come into a balance. They come into a synchronization, a purpose. And Mother Nature is the best example I can give you. It's everywhere. I tell you this because this field, as I said last week, is growing in strength and attitude. The field will try its best to cooperate with the human being's desire for harmony. This is a new tool on the planet. It means that it's more than just opening the door to awareness. The door will now fly open. <laughs> and you will be aware of things quicker than you ever were before. Because the field will actually push itself because you ask. Imagine an energy of benevolence that all it wants to do is create harmony wherever you walk. And here it goes. Can you use the field? Dear ones, not only can you use it, it can be your life. Today my partner spoke of the attributes of homeopathy. The unusual way that it works. A remedy, a tincture, is far too small to cause any kind of chemical reaction. Biologists know this. Chemists know this. And yet just the presence of a few parts per million of a remedy under the tongue of a human being will create cure. How? If you want to get to the minutia of it, you'll say, well, it's the innate. And that's what my partner told you today, and he's right. The smart body sees it. It doesn't see it as a desire or a wish. It sees it as your instructions for reality. Your instructions for reality. And then the body acts upon it naturally. Now stop right there. Why? <laughs> Can you name a physical process that would take the tincture and create a cure? And it's called the field. Because physics is present in chemistry. It's everywhere. Did you ever put this together? Or did you just think that the smart body did smart things and leave it at that? There has to be an underlying process for all things in order for you to connect the dots. It's like a fine Swiss clock. You're happy watching the hands go around. And you turn it over and you can see some gears moving. 
but you really don't know how they work. And now I'm telling you how they work. A tincture, a remedy, when placed into the human body, is exposed not just to the smart body or the innate, but the field. Because it has consciousness of effect. You have got the remedy in your hand. That is the consciousness that says, I am willing to give my body a reality. At that point in time, the message is clear. You put it under your tongue for fast assimilation into the bloodstream. That is an actionable item. It carries a compassion action for you and your body. You have just given a positive action symbol, and the field does the rest. It wants to create harmony with the chemistry. It talks to that which you call the innate. It moves to create cures in the body, sometimes even that which you call spontaneous remission is you connected to the field. Imagine regular physics all around you, and all it wants to do is bring synchronous things in harmony with one another. And what's the most synchronous thing you could have in your body? And it's called health. 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 I just gave you the secret of why homeopathy works. There has to be another force. Don't you see that? It's not just magic. It's not just the chemistry of your body in a random way, seeing something and acting. There has to be a driving force. And that's it. The physics of love, some of you may say. It's been hiding all along, but it's in plain sight. We've told you over and over that consciousness is physics. If it is, and if actual thought groups and intent carry energy, of intent. It makes thinking an actionable item. It means that which you do and think and project has positive energy for your body. So, we talked about affirmations last time. Let's talk about action this time. I want to call this channel the celebration channel because the celebrating of who you are is extremely actionable dear ones I'm going to give you something I've never given you before not an affirmation but a matching attitude for the field <laughs> if you want to marry to the field you're going to celebrate who you are. In celebration, there comes many attributes. Picture a celebration. What are you doing? A celebration. What are you doing? Are you dancing? Hmm? You get together and celebrate something beautiful and wonderful. You sing. There's music. There's laughter, there's joy, there's dancing. There's smiles all around. Pure celebration. All of those attributes together create a confluence of energy just by the word celebrate. If you celebrate your life, you're going to create something with the field. And the hardest thing to do is just that. In order to celebrate your life and see it as a real, healthy, ongoing, compassionate human, you're going to have to come into this new energy as the new human without fear. You might say, well, crying, I'm, I'm not afraid. If you want to take fear apart, yes, you are. Because part of fear 
is what you've been taught that lays underneath that which you can feel. The things that you might be afraid of doing, that's a feeling perhaps, but it's fear. The things that you would say, well, that's not me, I don't want to do it. Are, what are you afraid of? And the underlying one, the lack of self-worth that says, I don't deserve it, that's a fear of going forward and deserving it. Do you see that? You're going to have to wipe away all of that in order to have a pure celebration and connect to the field. But when you do, if you can, over time perhaps as the layers peel away of resistance, when you finally start to connect and you celebrate who you are, there are the words I am that come to mind. And you start to realize the connection you have with all things and you sit there and you start to celebrate that who you are, healthy, alive, living, joyful, smiling, and dancing. The celebration is that you are part of the cosmos itself. The celebration is that you belong on the planet. You belong here. No matter what anybody has ever told you about who you are or why you exist, you have to drop all the biases of what anybody has ever said. Anybody. What did your parents teach you? You're going to have to rewrite it. And in the process of rewriting it, what you do is you'll have to deal with the fact that you are going against what they told you. Because they didn't have it complete. Not in an old energy. Not really. You may love your parents, respect them, cherish them. Can you imagine then going against what they said? It's all part of how you think and who you are. You start to peel it away. There are tricks in this, and the tricks are how you conceive it and how you work it. You can envision your parents in front of you, and you can say, you didn't get it wrong, you just didn't know. There's something you should know. Then you inform your parents, metaphysically, metaphorically, in your own mind. You share your discoveries with those who told you one thing that's not exactly the way it is. You may say it's a mind trick, but everything is, dear ones, you must convince yourself of your own reality. It is you controlling you. It is what is taught at the highest level for a human being to have absolute control over their own being, only their, over their own thinking process, over their own emotions, without input and influence from anyone. But what are you going to do with this? I've just given you something that's very old. Some of those who started spiritual belief systems on this planet, sat for years, wiping away everything and getting in touch. This is not that new. But what is new is the energy of cooperation. For the field is alive and well. I want you to imagine billions of little hands waiting to take you on a benevolent, harmonious trip into the place you've asked to be. But those little hands will have to get through the layers of guilt, of doubt, of lack of self-worth that only comes from what you have been told. So it's time to turn the switch and say, I know what I was taught, but I'm going to clear the boards and think for myself what's out there, what is really out there. And that is the trick. Imagine if it were true, and it is, what we are telling you today. We're going to talk more about the field. 
but it's so prevalent everywhere. In physics, my partner even mentioned that which you call evolution and how the experts are now seeing that evolution was way too fast to be normal. They're right. Welcome to the field. Pushing it forward at an unbelievable speed that is not random. That's the field. It's been with you forever. It's helped create the humans that you see here that are ready to go into an ascension status on this planet in the new energy. The higher you get in consciousness, the greater the field will cooperate. This is a quantum secret that the Pleiadians knew, that those who seated you knew, that the higher the consciousness gets on a planet, the more cooperative it becomes with itself. That as you become more entangled with an elegance of thinking, the greater the ideas are that will come forward because the field is pushing them in a harmonious way, synchronizing them together and handing them to you because of your higher thought. That you didn't know. It's not a linear struggle as it has been. It's something that's coming that's beyond anything that you really expected. Imagine, the more you help yourself, the more help you get from the field. I sit today in the temple of wisdom because these are wise things. They're new things, and they're for you. These are advanced, for you live in a world that is recalibrating with many things that hurt your heart, as we told you there would be. You sit in a world where many are learning there's no more fence sitting. You can't be on the fence with these kinds of things anymore. You're either compassionate or you're not. You're either willing to go to these esoteric thoughts or you're not. And you can't then ride the fence and speak one way to one person and another to another. You'll be torn off the fence completely. You have to be in one camp or another. This is the new energy, especially for an old soul. So watch for these kinds of things in this energy. But I just gave you the future. It's the field. That's enough for now. And so it is we give you these things so that you may know them. And you will cognize them at your own pace. You will discern whether this message is accurate or comes from a human. You will feel the energy or you won't. And that is the free choice that is always yours. To take whatever is given to you and assimilate it or not. But dear ones, let me tell you something. You can't assimilate part of it. It's either all of it or it's none. And so it is. <laughs>